Warrior's been going decently well. These two go well together. I think I'm going to try to get that combo going. Hopefully we draw into some smaller cards. Yeah, Ancient Watcher will help. Yeah, the, the matchups you really want to run into are Hunters and Demon Hunters, though. We haven't been catching those today, but they're the first and third most popular on the list, according to the Versus Data Reaper report that came out today. So I assume this deck should still be doing well in the meta. Okay, that's a good warning. I rope a few BM. We won't BM. I didn't BM already, did I? It looks like he's ready to rope. Okay, no. Yeah, I know what you mean, still gaming. There are days I feel like that too. It, it was nice that the last few days I was getting matched up with exactly what I wanted to see, just like a ton of hunters and demon hunters. I think more than is even typical of the latter right now. Interesting. He's trying to outrace me here. <sighs> I want to be able to use that Holy Smite, but playing a Homunculus and healing up is not going to cut it for the remaining mana. I have to hope that there's still a good Holy Smite target next turn. Well, looks like there probably will be. Wow, he really wants to race me. Ooh, nice. I think I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> All right, we got board control. Hopefully he spent all of his stuff and he doesn't really have anything left to work with. Yeah, it's a difficult choice between Shade Quill and Heal Up this 4-2 or Psyche Split, but I think I'm going to Psyche Split while I am guaranteed to have a target. But I'll just go face. Going face is like kind of a questionable call because he could um, do the plus 3-3 three, three on the 1-5. That would be painful. Oh, I guess, or he could try to race me, but I don't think that's going to go well. Okay, I guess he will try to race me. Hmm. Alright. Change of plans. Let's be defensive. We're about to get a 2-5 taunt. I assume that means we're going to be okay. We're definitely going to be okay. It's fine. It's all fine here. <laughs> Apotheosis will very frequently 
cause a concede. Especially against Hunter, but Warrior is another matchup where that will sometimes happen. Hey, Demon Hunter, that's the matchup we wanted to see. All right. Uh, this hand is not great, though. I'm going to throw it all back. <laughs> Hopefully we find what we need on the mulligan. This is, this is a lot better. Um, so we can coin into the Imprisoned Vile Fiend, get a couple of them down, and have an Apotheosis set up whenever, for whenever the first one pops out. That should help us recover from any damage we take in the early game. Ooh, maybe I'll play that Watcher instead of the second Vile Fiend so that I have the Unsleeping Soul target on four. Holy Nova is really the hero of this matchup, though, um, because they, whenever you're playing these dormant minions and these unactivated watchers, they're just going to go face. But all of these early minions they have are just two health, so they just accumulate a whole bunch of these two or less health minions on their side of the board, and then just when everything becomes active, just when you silence your watchers, just whenever your demons are waking up, you Holy Nova and they lose their board, and then you have a huge, huge advantage. Although he's having a bit of a slow start here. Not that slow. There's that Holy Nova. Yeah, I think I'll still go with the Apotheosis. I hope he doesn't throw everything into it and kill it. I'd rather Holy Nova everything on his side of the board and just push. Yeah. Oh man, he's got double I beam. That's pretty funny. Is this it's still probably better to un Unsleeping Soul than Holy Nova this board. I'm going face. Hi there, Etten. Ooh, all right. We got cleared. We're a bit, we're a bit behind here. I think we might be okay though. We have the psyche split that we can play on the vile fiend when it wakes up. Mm, he just drew a bunch of cards though. This could be tough. All right, he's. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Nova is really good against the the satyr. I think this is the turn, still. It's tempting to like try to bait more, but there's too much damage coming our way. And I can clean it up with this Holy Smite. Probably Psyche Split next turn. I was kind of hoping he would drop a Priestess there so I could death Shadow or death it. In fact, I would have psyche split the priestess probably, and then death it. That's like a really fun combo that this deck can sometimes pull off. Psyche splitting is much less exciting though, whenever he doesn't have anything to attack with it. But if I don't psyche split him, I might not have any targets. I think I can't win unless I find some way to activate these arcane watchers anyway. So, 
I'm just going to play them, assuming that I'll eventually draw a way to activate them, and then I'll psyche split whatever one I activate. Otherwise, this is not going to go well. Another Seder. Well, where's our other Holy Nova? Uh, it's probably buried. There's 19 cards left in there. Yeah, if we don't find a way to activate them this turn, we're in big trouble, because we won't be able to kill that Seder anytime soon. Holy Nova, Holy Nova. Uh, Librarian will work. The only problem is that I can't play all three of these cards this turn. If I could, I would be in really good shape. Six, eight, ten, twelve. I think I can't just go face. Plah. He can't just go face either. That's something. That freeze is not a guaranteed play by any means. He's really counting on the fact that I don't find a silence in Silence Priest. It could work out for him. I mean, I have to top deck it. Uh, I didn't get it, but I might be okay. I think I still can't go face here. If I go face off 16, he'll have 5, 9, 10. Yeah, no, I definitely can't go face. Threatening lethal. This time it's a little bit more threatening than last time. This is a much more fun version of Priest than the standard just go on forever and hope that they eventually concede pretty straight. We're back to like full health, but all of a sudden he has a board and we do not. Probably the biggest danger is, hey there Drewski, it is fun. I really like this deck. Six, nine, 11, 14. Ah, we're in metamorphosis range. Gosh. I still don't think we can afford to go face. Can I afford to heal that minion at least? 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 17. Yes, I think I can. It's a judgment call, but Metamorphosis alone isn't able to do it this turn. I think that means that it's the right call. Oof, I am one damage short. I definitely have cards in my deck that would give me the win. Yeah, wow. Concedes there? I mean, I've, I certainly felt like I was advantaged having the Apotheosis minion, but I conceding seems a bit prema premature. <laughs> Alright. I'll take it, though. It's an example of how you can beat 
uh, Demon Hunter, although that was a much longer game than I, I feel like that matchup usually goes. We can usually close it out a lot earlier. More Demon Hunters, please. Is everybody coming here from the uh, Reddit post? Veil Weaver. I still don't think I want the Veil Weaver in the early game, even though I would come with the Holy Smite. It's probably going to be a while before we can get a Psyche split down. Yeah, I, I think I mentioned this before, but especially against Rogue, I like playing the Dormant Minions first, because um, it means that this turn, if he's sitting on a bunch of removal, there's nothing he can play it on. Whereas if I go with the Watcher first, then he can use the removal on the Watcher, which I actually don't want him to do because I have a Silence right now. It also kind of syncs them, so they become active the turn that the Watcher becomes active. Sort of hit all at once, which is nice. I'll probably play that Septic Veil Weaver next turn. It'll be behind two taunts, which somewhat matters against Rogue, but obviously they have removal. I can go through taunt. Uh, but I'll also be able to use it with the Silence. We'll get a free card, see what it is. Ah, cool. Yeah, a Crusher Shaman fan. I, I missed that deck. I, I tried to make it work a little bit last season. It's not... I don't think it's quite viable right now. It's making me nervous by playing that all by itself on two. I think I'm actually going to kill that. I'm not sure what he's planning to do with it, but... I think I'd rather play it safe, even though we do need to put pressure down. Yeah... All of the decks that I used to play, I think, are basically dead now. I tried sort of the Divine Shield Paladin. Now nah, there's not enough support for that. I tried... One second. Yeah, I'm just going to go face. I tried... Um, I was doing basically an Inner Fire Priest, actually Topsy Turvy, um, until that got nerfed away. I, I thought I was really close to making that kind of viable right whenever they announced that they were going to get rid of it. I was kind of disappointed. Yeah, playing Shaman does not feel good right now. I was playing a little bit of this kind of weird, like, it had some elements of Crusher Shaman. It had that weapon, weapon that, that gives you random minions, minions that cost the spells you play, which was actually very good, good, but not too reliable. And it was like cycling these sort of uh, prime minions, and it had a lot of spell power and a finisher. It was kind of fun. Not bad, but not really at a competitive level. <laughs> I want him to buff it, sort of. No, I wanted to get one more off of that, with the Psyche split. Oh, is Wild Big Shaman actually viable? I, I know nothing about Wild. Let's duplicate this. Ah, the problem with, yeah. The problem with this, of course, is Flick. If he has Flick, he wins. If he doesn't, I think we actually have him. But it's a total gamble on just does he have Flick or not. Yeah, there are two of my favorite classes too. Um, and my 
other favorite classes are Paladin and Priest. And the only one that's got really anything going for it right now is Priest. Oof. Yeah, sometimes Highlander can just get those cards, you know? Well, we're going to rely on Veilweaver giving us something good here, I think. Just give us, like, infinite amount of those. That would be great. Ugh. Can't. Technically allowed to play that, but it's not helpful. <laughs> He's going to let me keep that around for another turn. That's cool. Let's see what I get. Yeah, I'll power infuse you. These Veil Weavers, if they don't have an answer, they can go totally nuts and just win you the game. They're, they're a win condition all by themselves. I think, so I have two options, right? I can Psyche Split and Faceless. Or I can psyche, psyche, heal Psyche Split and Forbidden Words. I think I like that better, mainly because I just want to get rid of this Jeweler. He's very dangerous. But also, I get a lot of extra cards off this. Ooh, man. That Inner Fire is close to giving me the win. It doesn't quite do it because of the taunt. Could silence that. Yeah, let's silence it. Let's keep it going. All right. Veil Weaver is great. Druid's not quite as bad as Paladin or Shaman. Nice. The Veil Weaver's the Veil Weaver that we duplicated got it done. Another good one. Grubby. Oh. Grubby's like a pro player, right? I feel like I've played against him. I th feel like I played against him years ago. This deck, I th think, would do really well against Druid, but there's none out there, so I have no idea, really. Hunter's been a good matchup. I think without the extra silence, I don't want two of these guys. I'll take the cheaper one. So I can get started earlier. Hey there, Verbal. How's it going? Hmm. So... I have two options. I can either coin into the Ancient Watcher, play the Veil Weaver, and silence on turn two to get like a really aggressive start. Or I can go slower, play the Ancient Watcher on two, and coin into the Unsleeping Soul. I think I want to just go faster. I'll play the Watcher. Ancient Watcher, Veil Weaver, Silence is a pretty good start. That's a 4-4 charge, which is annoying. I'll be able to... He'll, he'll send that charge into the 2-3, which is okay. I'll be able to Holy Smite it away. And then hopefully still have a target for Unsleeping Soul by turn 4. Didn't do what I expected him to do there. And I don't think I'm worried about any traps unless I'm crazy. That's fine. Hmm. 
Which am I more interested in keeping alive? I think the Veil Weaver. Eh. No. I want him to be full health for Unsleeping Soul. Yeah, Spell Druid is fine. Um, with this, whenever I faced it, like earlier in the season I was playing some different versions of this deck. I hadn't quite refined it yet, but it was doing well against Spell Druid because it could um, Holy Nova away the, all the 2-2s two that pop out and stuff. And then you'd kill them before they could do their like really big swig turn. Oof, he managed to kill both. That's disappointing. I guess maybe I made a mistake. I mean... In retrospect, it would have been better to heal these and split them, probably. I don't know. Maybe he would have had a way to kill them both any anyway. Uh-oh, that means we whiffed on this turn. That's not good. Yeah, I miss Shaman. I miss Paladin. I miss Druid. Those were my three favorites. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good at all. What do I do, like, on Sleeping Soul just to keep something going? Oof. Not good. Yeah, this is the most classes that I've seen in the dumpster pile, I think. I, I missed like two years of Hearthstone, so maybe in that time there was a, another time. But like, there would often be two heroes in the dumpster pile. In fact, often they would be Paladin and Shaman. But Druid's also there this time. I guess Druid's the only other one. Warlock sort of found something that it can do. I have Holy Nova. So I'm not dead. And he's starting to run out of cards. I don't know, maybe I can still recover this game somehow. He's holding back the boar as a finisher, I think. I have a silence for the boar if he plays it for tempo. Without deck tracker, I'm like doing a really bad job of at identifying what kind of deck I'm playing against. Uh, I guess this is a yeah okay this is a dragon hunter. I should be paying more attention. And it's not Highlander, so. What am I even worried about right now? He has the boar finisher. Seems like I'll be okay until I can find something useful to play. Looks like we're just going to be passing a lot until we find something. Did anybody find the guide to be useful? I have no idea if people actually use those things. <laughs> or they just grab the deck list and go. <laughs> I enjoy making the guides. I'll probably do it regardless of whether they're useful or not. <laughs> I 
Like, was the guide for Crusher Shaman, for instance, useful? That was a long time ago. Different time. I don't really know what my opponent's waiting for. Well, let's see what that secret is. Or I guess we won't see what it is. I think I'm just going to hold back the Delirian Librarian. I'm not feeling the need to play it for tempo. Especially since it's probably a f exp an explosive trap anyway. He's got a lot of damage queued up. 1, 5, 10. He could do 12 damage over 2 turns if I walk into the... F Explosive trap. Got 22 health. He's got the boar. He just played it though. I can either silence that or holy nova it. With that down, I'm also I'm just gonna holy nova it. What is the first comment in the Reddit thread on the guide? I don't even know. Oh, talking about, oh yeah, 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 that, that Crusher Druid is like the last deck that I had any reasonable success with, um, but I haven't even played the game really since on Goro until I picked it up a couple months back. Yeah, that person was a bit negative. I think that if they gave it a shot, they would find that it's not that terrible. I mean, he correctly identifies the weakness of the deck. It's that you run out of cards early, or can. Um, but, you know, all decks should have a weakness, <laughs> probably. That's this deck's weakness. Seems fine. Um, let's see here. I already tested for Freezing Trap. I'm really counting on the fact that I remembered correctly. <laughs> that I remember that, because that, this would be a, a humongous mistake. <laughs> if it were a freezing trap. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I should have played the Librarian first. Oh, well. I don't think it'll matter. Because pretty much all that matters now is that I keep that Apotheosis minion alive. So, oh, I really should have played the Librarian. Okay, so I legitimately made a huge mistake here. Because if he has a Rottenest Drake, he's guaranteed to hit the Apotheosis minion. Okay, so I didn't get punished for it. But I should have played the Delarian Librarian first. It gets rid of that uh, death rattle on the um, shade quill, but that's not, that wasn't a huge deal in that matchup. I wasn't going to win by just running him out of health. The bigger deal is that I didn't have a two three down that could soak up a rottenous drake on a fifty fifty, <laughs> and I just let my apotheosis minion be the only minion on the board. That's something to be aware of. Your biggest concerns against uh, Dragon Hunter are Rottenest Drakes and the Primordial Explorers. Alright, we found another Demon Hunter. Didn't get Holy Nova again. The Holy Nova is really the, the thing that makes it a layup matchup. But, you know, with we have some uh, demons early that will help us compete, so I'm not too worried. Hey there, Ty Hardly. How's it going? Thanks for following. And hello, the writinger. Are you writing something? Oh, thanks for following, Drewski. Well, next turn I'm going to have to choose between Veilweaver smiting something or playing my Arcane Watcher. The, the Weaver will be behind a taunt. That's pretty tempting. And I don't have a way to activate the Watcher, so I think that's probably the way I'm going to go. They have the... Um, the I beam though. So it might not work out. Ooh. 
No, I think I think I still want the the Veil Weaver. I'll have the other demon popping out to use the Faceless Rager on. I want to get the Veil Weaver going. He can do exciting things. I actually want that silence. I'm not going to just cycle that. I need that for my watcher now. That's actually possibly a, a great draw. Oh, hey there from uh, Competitive HS. Yeah, I posted the, the guide to both Competitive HS and the regular Hearthstone Reddit. Yeah, he did have the eye beam. Yeah, it was worth testing, I think. Removal checks are good to do every once in a while. Hi, Cube of Soup. Thanks for hanging out. We've been on a pretty good win streak here. I haven't been... Without Deck Tracker, I'm, I'm totally lost. I have no idea what's going on right now. And for some reason, I can't get it. Some people are saying that they have Deck Tracker working again, but it's still broken for me. So I'm, I'm lost. I have no idea how many games we've won. But I think we were close to 6,000. We're up to 5,000. So we've clearly won some games in a row here. Yeah, it's not just you, Drewski. Other people seem to be having <laughs> success with it, too. I tried to restart it. It didn't, or tried to, what do you call it, reinstall it. I tried uh, having it check for updates. It says mine's up to date. And um, it just hangs whenever I load it. And it actually, like, ruins the stream because it just eats up all of my processing. So it's... I kind of want to go for the greed of Silence Apotheosis and then hoping to Faceless Rager the bigger minion next turn. But it's probably better to go the safer route and just, while I have the minion, make sure I duplicate it. And then I'll, I'll get to Apotheosis, whichever one is bigger next turn. Yeah, Deck Tracker is super useful. I feel, like, impaired out here right now. Like, I, I can, you know... <laughs> playing at some kind of disadvantage. <laughs> it's funny how dependent I've become on it. I, Like, for the first two years of playing Hearthstone, I, it didn't exist. I didn't play it. I didn't have that tool. I just had to remember things. Or sometimes I even write down, like, cards. Like, if I knew I had to count removal targets, I would, like, write down whenever he, my opponent played the various important minions. I think we'll just go face. True. I So, I play mobile early in the season whenever like I'm not so worried about wins or losses. Nice, we got another one. Oops. That wasn't meant to be BM, I meant to hit. Well played. <laughs> yeah, so I play mobile early in the season whenever I care a little bit less, but once I start getting serious about my record and like feel like I have a refined deck and stuff, I, I only play on my computer. And I want to keep track of like how it's doing and stuff too, so... Deck Tracker is good for that, but right now, I don't have that. Ooh, Druid! I haven't seen a Druid in two weeks, I think. Let's see how this deck does against Druid. I don't even know. Four Silences. I think I don't want any of these. Yeah, it's a new class, guys. This isn't the greatest start hand. We might not... We might lose to it. Yeah, I feel like they should come check it out. Um, it would have been nice if they saw the last few games since I've won so many in a row. Not usually that lucky, obviously. Um, but 60% win rate, rank 5 to, to um, Legend. And if I understand the system correctly, once I ran out of bonus, systems, uh, bonus stars at rank 5, I was no longer being matched by my MMR, and I was being ranked by my rank, I think. Or, sorry, matched by my MMR, I was being matched by my rank. Someone can correct me on chat if I am incorrect about that. I only partially understand the system. Like, I used to have this sort of idea in my mind of what it meant to be good enough, for a deck to be good enough in general, or, like, to be worth writing a guide about. And I'm not really sure what that is anymore. I think this one's there, because it feels like I'm winning a lot of games. I've been winning a lot of games in Legend. I've been winning a lot of games on the way to Legend. But I don't know. It's a different system. I, I haven't gotten myself calibrated yet. It seems like there have to be plenty of people that are in the same same, uh, sorry, in the same situation I am, though. Uh, you know, 
kind of ladder quickly with a cheap deck that only uses a couple expansions. This deck's been working very well for that. Oh, this turn's kind of a whiff. We threw all those silences back and we managed to draw them again. I could renew just for the sake of digging, but I think we'll just heal pass. Wait, what's the MMR change at, at Legend? I don't think I've been following the posts well enough to know all the nuances here. Anybody else here from competitive HS? Hi, Super Cup. How's it going? Hi, Masterin. And hello, Pancakes. Didn't they always match you based on a hidden MMR at Legend? I can't remember. It's been so long now. Oh, hey, we're going to get a nice duplicate target here. That's good. We have so many silences, though. We only run six silences in our deck, and we have four of them in our hand. And we're only nine cards in. It's pretty unlucky. But, I mean, I can't complain too much with the board that we have. And maybe those silences will get us through some taunts for lethal. He's got to do something soon. Okay. He's going to. Okay. I don't have a way to kill that. I can silence it so I don't lose, but kind of sucks to not be able to kill it. Yeah, you know, I never played Silence Priest back in the day. My favorite Silence deck was actually Druid. Um, and this one plays a little bit like that, but that Druid was more about going wide with a bunch of minions and then Savage Roaring, as most Druid decks were about. Um, this one's more about building that tempo advantage early so that you have minions on the board and then buffing them and duplicating them and stuff, which... It's actually maybe more fun anyway. How does this one work? <laughs> ah, that seems a bit slow for the situation he's in. Uh, I want to know. I want. I want a different card. <laughs> what else do we got? Another psyche split sounds good though. It's a shame I can't psyche split and faceless rager this turn. Let's just keep going face. Yeah, I'm still farther down than I was yesterday, and I've been winning way more games than losing, but I think it's just because so many people are getting to legend these days. Yeah, I mean, I, I assume I'm just dropping because more and more people are getting to Legend and getting ranked higher than me because they have better MMRs. But it feels like you have to play a lot of games just to stay where you're at, which could be kind of disappointing. It's just easier to get to Legend than it used to be. It takes fewer games. That technically keeps him alive if I don't draw something useful.
Don't silence this. Got it. I don't think Druid has any big board clears, so I should just be able to keep going face. Basically out of cards in my hand, but I'm pretty sure that what I have in my hand is enough. This is a slightly different, this is a different Druid build than I've ever seen. I might be walking into a trap. Yeah, I had a crazy poor Legend rank last season. It, but I shouldn't have even gotten to Legend at all. I was just playing some de Demon Hunter. I, I wanted to try out Demon Hunter just for the sake of trying it out. And I just threw together something janky. And somehow that was good enough. Did he think that that was going to beat me? <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, it, I feel like it's a little bit too easy to get to Legend these days. But I mean, I don't know. It's kind of nice to get to the level where you just see what your 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 rank is in the region. <laughs> 